this brings us to part one of our evening. And so, um, as you've all hopefully seen as you've been passing into the auditorium tonight, uh, on the green walls outside us in our Perkins Gallery is a lovely <coughs> show called A Brush with Herstory, the paintings of Gabriela Gonzalez de Loso. And those works have been here in the museum for about two weeks now. And as you will have noticed, or as you will notice after this opening, uh, the paintings are exquisitely painted. They are old master style by a new master whom you will hear from momentarily. Also, the subject here is vitally important as we think about art history, or just history in general, but since we're in a museum, as we think about art history over the course of time, since humans started making art, we have a lot of difficulty thinking about where women's place in that history has been. It's disappointing, and it is still true to this day that women's place in a mostly patriarchal or mostly male-dominated industry is lacking. And here at the museum, and certainly through Gabriella's work, we're trying as hard as we can to remedy that situation. There are a lot of women artists who deserve to have their work come to the fore, and through an exhibition like this, we are able to look back in history and revive the stories of those that many of us in this room may not have ever heard about before. So as a bit of a preface to Gabriella's coming up to speak about her own work, um, I just want to give a sense of where this subject has come from scholastically and academically. Over on the left side, you see a photograph of Linda Nochlin, who just passed away two years ago, December. She was my uh, dissertation advisor. She was my graduate advisor, actually, for my doctoral degree. Um, and I'm so grateful that she is a seminal art historian. She's basically a seminal feminist art historian who literally wrote the work called Why Have There Been No Great Women Artists. It was published in 1971, and it was a transformative essay of the 1970s, really spurring on a lot of the academic sides of the feminist revolution. So I throw out that question. You see a little asterisk there. That's not an asterisk that teases some her answer. This actually showed that this publication was from a longer version of it in a reader. But the question was, why have there been no great women artists? And while that may seem to us somewhat logical today, that question had not been posed before Linda Nock posed it in 1971. You might come up with a few easy answers as to why there have been no great women artists. Well, because they were overlooked through time. Linda Nochlin proposed that that was not the case, that that is, well, that's the nice answer to say, there have been no great women artists, and this is her provocative statement, because there have been no great women artists. That doesn't mean that there are women who are not great artists, but that's because they didn't have the capacity to be able to exceed in the art world. There have been many great women artists, but they are not known to us as great women artists because of their place in society. That if you were of the same, um, certainly the same wealth or level of wealth as a man who could, be able, who could have the ability to go study in the academy, you were waiting to be married off. You were at home. It was inappropriate. Women couldn't study in the academy alongside men, mostly because of, one, their expectation of what, their, what they were supposed to do in life, but also because women could not study the male nude or any nudity along with men in a room. Women who made their way to the academy had studied plaster casts of the body, which is very limiting in that way. So the provocative statement that Nachman said was there have been no great women artists because there have been no great women Artists. Although, I think today we might beg to differ with that a little bit. If I throw out this question, how many female artists can you name pre-1950? I bet there are a few names that will pop out. Now, this is where, this is the interactive part, everyone. Um, so, kindly, yes, let's, I'll just call a few. Grandma Moses. Oh, Grandma Moses, good one. Anybody else? Uh, Miriam Shapiro. Let's do pre-1950, really. There's a reason you're going to have more post-1950. Go pre, yeah. Uh, Barrett Morisot. Barrett excellent. One of my favorites. George O'Keefe. George O'Keefe. Uh, Frida Kahlo. Frida Kahlo, good. Ruth Bernard. Okay, Ruth Bernard, okay. Mary Passat. Mary Passat, good. Okay, how about this woman? Do you know who this is? Artemisia Gentileschi, good, I heard that. Look at the dates here. 1593 through 1656. Arguably the earliest, best known female artist in art history. She was well known and renowned in her own lifetime. 
How is that possible, though? How did a woman of the Italian Baroque period achieve a claim in the 17th century when I bet you will all be pushed hard to think of the next person in the chronology of, of women in art history? Well, guess what? She was the daughter of a painter named Orazio Gentileschi, and these slides are not helping yet. Orazio Gentileschi. Um, she had the advantage of being the daughter of an artist. Oftentimes, you will find that women artists who have fathers or have other, who have parents that have the ability to give them training or have that artistic inclination are more open to their daughters to go into that field. And I know that um, Gabriella will probably speak more on this because she alludes to a lot of these artists in her own work. Next, in our chronology of women artists in art history, we gotta leap forward to this woman. Does anybody know who she is? That's good, I think. Good, some very knowledgeable art historians here. Elizabeth Vigée Le Brun. We're leaping forward to the, look at this, to the 18th century. Anybody know how Elizabeth Vigée Le Brun really had the ability to be able to become a known quantity or known name in art history? Guess who her patron was? <laughs> Who's this woman on the left side? Yes. Yes. There's Marie Antoinette. She was the court painter of Marie Antoinette. And then also, what did not help Elizabeth Vigée Le Brun was that she was married to an art gallerist. And back in the late 18th century, if you're married to a gallerist, someone who traded in commercial art, that was a bad thing. So that was actually a knock on her. But because of her extreme talent, she was accepted to the Royal Academy in the late 18th century. Okay, let's leap ahead. Maybe. Mary Cassatt. I think these are some names that work out, right? We leap to the end of the 19th century to Impressionist painters. Mary Cassatt, um, an American artist who really made her name in Paris, and Berthe Morisot, slightly lesser known to the general public than Mary Cassatt, but um, actually one of my absolute favorites. Um, if anybody knows the way you can do a Berthe Morisot exhibition at the Polk Museum of Art, that would be wonderful. Any great connections, I love that. And a Mary Cassatt exhibition, of course, but I think Mary Cassatt so, uh, deserves a lot more due, I think, that she has from the general population. And then, how about this? George O'Keefe. I think a lot of us think about George O'Keefe as the next best known artist of the 20th century. And of course, when you think about George O'Keefe, many people unfortunately think about one element of her paintings that they associate with her. And um, you might think about a painting like this. Um, and while George O'Keefe insisted that she was focusing on floral forms and the anatomy of flowers, many people thought she was focusing on the anatomy of women. And that goes into that traits and that concept of what makes something a feminine work of art, which is bulk. There is no such thing as a feminine work of art. What makes something a work by a woman artist? But these are principally the best known artists of that period. There have been many, many, many other artists, but they've not had the opportunity to establish themselves. Or I think as Gabriella talked about, some of them became overlooked or they became erased from that history. So it's a very complex history of women's place in it. And so you'll notice that as I've been speaking, um, not only have the slides been delayed, but um, there have been a few terms I have thrown out. It sounds horribly offensive, right? But we think about women artists to specify and distinguish them from being male artists. But preferably, we would not use the term woman artist. Um, maybe female artist is better because it describes them in contrast to male artists. But I think preferably, we would all just use the term artist. artist. In an ideal world, we would be able to do so. And so that is my great teaser for where we are going now. Um, I'm, it's my pleasure to be able to introduce someone who can speak better on this than I because it's all about her own work. Um, we are honored tonight to have Gabriella Gonzalez Deloso in the house with us. And let me tell you a little bit about Gabriella. She traveled down to us uh, from New Jersey. She is a native New Yorker who lives and works in New Jersey and who specializes, as we all can see, in narrative realism. Beautiful narrow, 
narrative realism. She studied in New York at the Art Students League and the National Academy School and received her Bachelor of Fine Arts degree from the School of Visual Arts. Her paintings can be found in many notable private and museum collections, including our own. Many of you may remember for a good period of time we had a painting called The Recyclers set up in the little room that we call our study gallery between tactical and the student gallery. That is Gabriella's work. It was the old master style painting featuring uh, feuding parties over recycled goods. Um, and it's brilliant, and we love it, and we love more of Gabrielle's work in the collection. Uh, Gabrielle's work has been published in the New York Times, Fine Art Connoisseur, Art News, and many other major publications. She is represented by the Harmony Gallery in Naples, Florida, through which we acquired our very first pieces uh, by Gabriella. Today, Gabriella teaches painting and drawing at the New York School for the Arts and the JCC of Manhattan. It is my pleasure to welcome Gabriella to the microphone. Let's welcome her.